Hi everyone. In the previous part, we had gone through the uh, introduction to immunity and the classification of immunity where we have discussed in detail about the first type of immunity that is innate immunity which is also called as natural immunity. The types that is species, racial, individual and the mechanism behind this innate immunity in detail. Now in this part we are going to discuss about the second type of immunity that is acquired immunity. So acquired means the immunity that you are going to acquire during your lifetime that is during the lifetime is going to be called as acquired immunity. This acquired immunity is also going to be named as adaptive immunity or uh, induced immunity or specific immunity. Okay, we will discuss. And this acquired immunity is again of two types that is actively acquired immunity, passively acquired immunity. And this active immunity can be by the natural mode or by the artificial mode and the passively acquired immunity can be by the natural mode or it can be by the artificial mode. So let's see uh, this uh, acquired immunity in detail one by one now. So we had gone through innate immunity and then we had gone through the mechanism of innate immunity isn't it and then now this is what we are going to discuss in detail. So the resistance acquired by an individual during his lifetime is going to be called as acquired immunity and the other synonyms of this acquired immunity is specific immunity or adaptive immunity or induced immunity. And this acquired immunity is again classified into two types. One is a actively acquired immunity and so the second one is a passively acquired immunity. The first actively acquired immunity or simply called as active immunity is an immunity that an individual is going to get naturally or by artificially exposing to infections or by antigens and resulting some sort of a, uh, immunity that was produced by either by humoral or cell mediated immunity is going to be called as active immunity. That means suppose after birth you are going to expose it to some sort of infections. Take it as a, a smallpox disease. So once you uh, or the chicken pox, smallpox is not there. But once you are going to be exposed to this chicken pox, measles, mums naturally and if without any vaccine or medicines it is getting cured and during your lifetime the reoccurrence of that chicken pox won't occur. And the reason behind this one is your cell mediated immunity and the humoral mediated immunity. So that's how when an individual is naturally or artificially exposed to infections or antigens, it results in the stimulation and active functioning of the immune system leading to humoral or cell mediated immunity. And this actual immunity, depending upon the natural mode and the artificial mode, it is again being classified into two types. That is naturally actively acquired immunity, artificially actively acquired immunity. Okay, let's see them. So the first one is natural active acquired immunity or naturally active acquired immunity is one and the same. So this is going to be acquired by natural infection as I told you by the organism after repeated exposure to small doses of uh, infecting organism which pass unnoticed. See we are going to inhale several types of uh, microorganism but still you are not going to get any disease. The reason is naturally you are going to get this infection resistance by your body because of the small doses that you are getting in. Okay, how you are going to train your body slowly if you are going to practice it. So you will become the strong enough in the same manner. These small doses of entry of uh, pathogens into the body also makes your body uh, going to be strong. And that kind of uh, immunity is going to be called as naturally actively acquired immunity. The best example is going to be poliomyelitis and tuberculosis. And this kind of uh, immunity that is natural active immunity is a long lasting and plays an important role in preventing epidemics. Okay, the sudden outbreaks of many diseases at a given area or specific area is going to be called as epidemics. So if you are going to get the naturally the active immunity then that kind of the immunity is going to be called as naturally actively acquired immunity. Then what is the second type of uh, uh, active immunity is the artificial actively acquired immunity. 
So here it is a resistance produced by vaccination as vaccination means uh, the taking of vaccines either of a preparation of live attenuated or killed microorganisms or their antigens or their active materials uh, derived from them is going to be enhancing your immune system and that's how you are going to be protected. For example, here a training is given to your body artificially by inducing some sort of uh, antigens into you in the form of vaccination and these small doses if it is going to be naturally then we call it as natural if you are giving it in the form of uh, artificial method that means you are forcibly introducing or inducing some pathogens into your body which are weakened in condition so obviously you will your body will recognize them and fight against them and it will win obviously because the pathogen is weak and this practice will make it uh, strong and immunized and when a real pathogen comes inside it is going to fight and it is protecting our body so the taking of vaccination or uh, is going to be of a artificial actively acquired immunity so here the acquired immunity actively acquired immunity in both the cases either by the natural method or artificial method our immune system is fighting against them so that's why this is going to be called as actively acquired immunity then coming to the passive immunity or passively acquired immunity the name itself is saying that pass so you are going to passage something from one to the other so what is that something nothing but the ready-made antibodies okay so here the resistance that is induced in the recipient by the transfer of ready-made antibodies from one to another host is going to be called as passive immunity okay so the passive immunity is less effective whereas our active immunity is more effective and it is a long lasting but here it is a less effective and short lasting only for days or weeks so it is useful when instant immunity is required so if you want to have an instant immunity then you are supposed to have the prescription of this kind of immunity called as passive immunity and this passively acquired immunity can be either by the natural method or by the artificial method so depending upon that again we are having the two types that is naturally passively acquired immunity artificially passively acquired immunity so here the naturally passively acquired immunity it is a resistant passively transfer from mother to fetus there will be no involvement of anyone just naturally it is occurring from mother to fetus and infants for example uh, the mother uh, through the placenta the immunoglobulin igg is going to be transferred from mother to the fetus during the delivery time and that igg antibodies are going to protect this fetus uh, from immediate exposure to the microorganisms that after coming into this world and infants the infants are also so sensitive they cannot fight again as the pathogen so what uh, how they are being protected this infants are going to be protected from the infections by some sort of antibodies that is iga antibodies which are present in the mother milk that is called as cholesterol so that's how these antibodies are being passed on from mother to the fetus in pre uh, protecting their infants and the fetus by natural method so these are going to be called as natural passively acquired immune tumor. so as the infant grows or comes into the baby form uh, the baby develops uh, its own um, what we call it as immunity and that's how this will remove so but instantly the baby is going to get the immunity by the transfer of uh, antibodies from mother to the fetus or mother to the infant so example transfer of the maternal antibodies to the fetus transplacentally and to infant through the milk so that's how it is a natural mode of passively acquired immunity then how is the artificially passive acquired immunity? This artificial passively acquired immunity is going to be very important in some immunocompromised persons. So like uh, HIV, okay, or mainly it is going to be used in the treatment of gas gangrene, tetanus, diphtheria, etc. And passively uh, administration of antibody is very useful in some clinical conditions as I mentioned all these things. Okay. And here artificially we are going to collect from a uh, donor and we are giving it to the administrating that to the recipient. So that's kind of uh, 
transfer of antibodies that is ready made antibodies are being passed out from one person to the other that is from donor to the recipient by the involvement of us uh, artificially it is occurring so this comes under the artificially passively acquired immunity so this is how the passively acquired immunity that means passage of antibodies can be occurred by natural method or by artificial method so let's have a quick review that we have discussed about the acquired immunity so acquired immunity is again of two types actively acquired immunity or simply active immunity or passively acquired immunity or passive immunity and this can be of a by natural method or by artificial method or it can be by natural method or by artificial method and coming to the natural method as i told you antibodies developed in response to an infection by natural method so obviously active immunity and this is going to be by the vaccination that means administration of vaccines is going to be the vaccination so if you are going to develop the immunity because of the uh, vaccination then obviously it is an artificial active immunity then passive immunity passage of antibodies from someone to somewhere is going to be the passive and it can be by natural method that is from mother to the fetus or from mother to the infant then artificial is ready made antibodies are going to be supplied from the donor to the recipient so this is the overall uh, different types of acquired immunity that you are going to acquire during uh, lifetime is going to be called as acquired immunity then what is the mechanism behind this acquired immunity so coming to the mechanism of acquired immunity acquired immunity uh, is going to respond uh, is going to respond in two forms one is because of uh, humoral immunity and the one is a cell mediated immunity that as i mentioned in the starting of this topic okay let's see in detail humoral immunity is a immunity mediated by antibodies produced in body fluids such as plasma lymph is going to be called as humoral immunity and specific antibodies are produced in response to specific antigens for example if you are going to have the entry of uh, some typhoid uh, bacteria that is salmonella typhi into your blood so obviously the antibodies relevant to that typhoid bacteria is going to be produced and in the same manner if a hepatitis a virus enters into your body so obviously your body is going to produce the antibodies relevant to that uh, virus okay so thus the antigen molecules or particles may be clumped or lysed and their toxins may be neutralized or readily removed after phagocytosis by neutrophils or the macrophages so this is how the humoral immunity is going to be acting and we will discuss in detail all these things in the coming topics of immunology and then the second type of uh, immunity that we are going to see as a mechanism in the causing of acquired immunity is cell mediated so immunity produced by the synthesis of lymphocytes okay or cells is going to be called as cell mediated immunity so these lymphocytes react with the specific antigens and brings about the cytotoxic effects resulting in the lysis of microbial antigen so example are going to be your monocytes or the macrophages or the best examples of the cell mediated immunity and the example is the sensitized t lymphocytes are important in resistant to chronic bacterial infections like uh, tb that is tuberculosis brucellosis leprosy and in some viral diseases like a uh, herpes simplex virus okay so this is how the cells if they are involved in causing the immunity then we call it as a cell mediated immunity if the antibodies are involved in causing the immunity then we call them as humoral immunity and these are the two modes by which we are going to have our acquired immunity okay we will discuss this humoral and cell mediated immunity in detail in one of the part of immunology so that's how we have finished the two types of immunity that is one innate immunity and then second one is going to be of a acquired immunity so that's all about the this immunity topic thank you